Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 17th of July. India's coronavirus tally crosses 1 million mark with the highest single-day spike of over 34,000 cases. India slams Pakistan over construction of Diyamir Basha Dam in Gilgit, Baltistan. And shopkeepers in Nepal fail to make profit even during the Hindus' holy month of Shravan. And now for all the details. India on Friday became the third country in the world to record more than 1 million cases of the new coronavirus behind only the United States and Brazil as infections spread further into the countryside and smaller towns. India recorded 34,956 new infections on Friday, taking the total over 1 million. India recorded 34,956 new infections on Friday, taking the total to 1,003,832 with 25,602 deaths from COVID-19. India has now become the third country in the world to record more than 1 million cases of new coronavirus behind only the United States and Brazil. The pandemic has surged in the country in recent weeks as infections spread further into the countryside and smaller towns beyond the biggest cities. Authorities imposed fresh lockdowns and designated new containment zones in several provinces this week, including the largely rural Bihar province in the east and the southern tech hub Bengaluru, where cases have spiked. Post-COVID, we have to change all the things in one way. And that's also a discipline. If we change the people in the middle, if we don't change the people in the middle, then it will increase the tally. There are about 32,000 cases in one day. So this is definitely a little bit of a concern. Given India's population of around 1.3 billion, experts say, given India's population of around 1.3 billion, experts say, one million is relatively low, but the number will rise significantly in the coming months as testing increases, further straining a healthcare system already pushed to the brink. A long-awaited meeting of India's officials with Indian national Kulbushan Jadav under Pakistani's custody ended inconclusively on Thursday after Pakistan refused to give them unimpeded consular access, the Indian Foreign Ministry said. India's counselor officers who met Indian national Kulbushan Jadav in Pakistan's custody for alleged espionage on Thursday said they were not given unimpeded, unhindered and unconditional access to Jadav violating the International Court of Justice 2019 order. Indian Foreign Ministry issuing a statement after media inquiries over the matter said it was evident from a camera that was visible that the conversation between Jadav and the Indian Councillor Officers on Thursday was being recorded. This comes after Pakistan earlier this month claimed that Jadav has refused to file a review petition for reconsideration of his death sentence and conviction and instead wants to go ahead with mercy plea. Pakistan had in 2019 granted Consular access to Jadav after a prolonged legal battle with India in the International Court of Justice. In its verdict on July 17, the World Court had ordered Pakistan to undertake an effective review of the conviction and sentence of Jadav. India denies the allegations against Jadav and maintains that he was kidnapped by Pakistan operatives from Iran, where he had business interests. Moving on. India has condemned Pakistan's decision to construct the Diyamar Bhasha Dam in Gilgit, Baltistan and condemned Islamabad's continuous attempts to bring about material changes in Indian territories under its illegal occupation. India on Thursday said it has strongly protested with Pakistan its decision to construct the Diyamar Bhasha Dam on the Indus River in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan 
saying it will submerge large parts of India's Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh territories. India's strong protest came after Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday kicked off construction work at the Diyamar Basha Dam in Chilas in Gilgit, Baltistan, notwithstanding New Delhi's objection to the China-backed mega project. We have strongly protested against the con construction of this dam to the government of Pakistan. This dam will lead to submergence of a large part of land of the Indian Union territories of JNK and Ladakh. And we condemn the continuous attempts by Pakistan to bring about material changes in Indian territories under its illegal occupation. The Amar Basha Dam is the second mega multipurpose dam that has been commenced in about a year and is scheduled to be completed in 2028 to 29. The project has not only ravaged the natural resources of the illegally occupied region, but also left a large number of homeless and poverty striking. Amid rising coronavirus cases in Pakistan, leader of MQM Dr. Farooq Sattar, while criticizing the government's poor way of handling the pandemic, said Pakistan may witness another peak in August amid Eid al Adha celebrations. Pakistan, as of Friday, reported 259,998 confirmed cases of the deadly virus. Leader of MQM Pakistan, Dr. Farooq Sattar, while expressing concern over the surge in coronavirus cases, said Pakistan may witness another peak in August during Eid al Adha celebrations. Sattar said as the authorities have reopened cattle markets, malls, and other public places ahead of the festival, no standard operating procedures are being followed by the public. Pakistanis buy animals for slaughter at crowded livestock markets as part of Eid al Adha celebrations, which may become hotbeds of infection. Celebratory gatherings during the festival itself are also a risk. Maveshi Mandi ki vaja se bad etiyati ho rahi hai. Jo malls khule hain, jo markets khuli hain, wahan par SOPs follow nahi ho rahi hain. Aur jab zare ki Eid par bazaar apne peak par jayenge aur meri bhane betiya phir usi tarah. बगैर एसओपी को फॉलो किए वह मार्केट और दुकानों में और कपड़े और जूतों की खरीदारी में चूड़ियां खरीदने में रश लगेगा तो मुझे फिर मुझे डर है कि ये अगस्त में हम एक बार एक बड़े बहरान से दो चार होंगे एक बहुत बड़ी पीक आ सकती है बोथ पाकिस्तान रिपोर्टेड केसेस एंड डेथ्स फ्रॉम कोविड नाइन्टीन एक्सलरेटेड लास्ट मंथ इन दी कंट्री ऑफ टू मिलियन ओनली टू अनएक्सपेक्टेडली स्लिप बैक इन जुलाई Prime Minister Imran Khan's government has claimed that the falling cases are proof that its strategy of smart lockdowns is working. However, the opposition has accused them of cutting testing to suppress the numbers. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's United National Party or the UNP has launched its election manifesto for the upcoming general elections. One of the main aims of UNP is to revive the island nation's COVID-19 hit economy, said top party leader and former Lankan Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe. The United National Party or UNP on Thursday launched the party's election manifesto for the upcoming polls under the patronage of leader Ranil Wickremesinghe. Wickremesinghe, while launching the manifesto, said his party aims to revive the COVID-19 hit economy and has pledged to establish an enterprise support scheme, set up new investment zones, and protect businesses from virus-related bankruptcies. Some of the other pledges in the UNP general election manifesto includes improving people's financial situation, safeguard jobs and income, providing allowance every month to needy and families affected by coronavirus lockdown recently. Sri Lanka is scheduled to hold its parliamentary election on August 5. Afghanistan's foreign minister has given hopes of intra-Afghan negotiations soon and said there are 12 countries who have offered to host the talks. The statement comes at the time when Afghan government and the Taliban have continued the prisoner releases this week under the US Taliban agreement signed in February. Afghan foreign minister Mohammad Hanif Atmar on Thursday informed that 12 nations want to host intra-Afghan talks including the regional countries. Atmar said the countries who have shown interest in hosting the long awaited talks include Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, China, Russia and Turkey among others. 
The Afghan minister's statement came at the time when intra-Afghan negotiations between the government and the Taliban are expected to start soon. The U.S.-Taliban deal signed in February in Doha still remains unimplemented in some parts, such as reduction in violence and the intra-Afghan negotiations, which should have happened 135 days after the accord. However, a major clause in the agreement over U.S. troop withdrawal was implemented recently, as the Pentagon announced on Tuesday that U.S. troops had withdrawn from five military bases and reduced the size of its forces in Afghanistan. Moving on to news from Nepal. The shopkeepers in Nepal are finding it hard to make any profits even in the holy month of Shavan, despite the government easing some of the COVID-19 lockdown norms. The Himalayan nation has so far reported 17,344 confirmed coronavirus cases with 39 deaths. Despite the Nepal government easing some of the COVID-19 lockdown norms, the shopkeepers in capital Kathmandu are finding it hard to make any profits even in the holy month of Shravan. The Shravan month is considered by Hindus auspicious for offering prayers to Lord Shiva, the god of destruction and creation for happiness and prosperity. During this month, women flock to markets to purchase varieties of cosmetic items and specially tricolored beads. Red, green and yellow are high in demand. Marriage women prefer wearing green and yellow accessories along with red, but the unmarried one pair green and yellow. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, several bead weavers are missing on their regular income as the market misses its usual crowd. <laughs> The Himalayan nation has so far reported 17,344 confirmed coronavirus cases with 39 deaths. The coronavirus crisis in India has not only attacked the health of the elderly, but their social status as well as people are increasingly dropping them at old age homes because of their vulnerable age, worrying about family safety. Old age home officials in India's western Ahmedabad city earlier this week said that people are inquiring about vacancy at old age homes more than usual over the past few weeks. The reason they cite is that if the elderly who are more vulnerable to coronavirus are sent away, the whole family would be safe. The coronavirus crisis in India has not only attacked the health of the elderly, but their social status as well. The grandparents घर वालों को एक डर रहता है कि अगर ये इन्फेक्टेड हो गए क्योंकि एक ओल्ड एज होम में इन्फेक्शन की ज्यादा तकलीफ रहती है तो उनको ऐसा लगता है कि ये अगर बाय चांस इन्फेक्टेड हो गए तो पूरा घर का क्या होगा सो so, वो ऐसा सोचते हैं कि भी इनको ये वृद्धाश्रम में डाल दें तो घर में सब सेफ रहेंगे on the other hand, many have also lost their jobs due to lockdown and restrictions on movement and financial situation is difficult but elderly are the first ones to face the X. Ahmedabad has been one of the most affected cities by the pandemic with more than 1,500 deaths and over 3,620 active cases. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India's coronavirus tally crosses 1 million mark with the highest single-day spike of over 34,000 cases. India slams Pakistan over construction of Diyamir Basha Dam in Gilgit, Baltistan. And shopkeepers in Nepal fail to make profit even during the Hindus' holy month of Shravan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAJNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAJNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. 
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन